Hi everybody, welcome to the Scuba Diver Magazine channel. Now, with the rise in popularity of backplate and wing BCDs in recreational scuba diving, I figured that I'd make a quick how-to video on how to properly assemble your backplate and harness if it doesn't come fully assembled. Granted, some complete sets do come fully assembled in the box, which is nice, but they do still require a little bit of adjustment for your exact size. And if you want to add or remove any particular parts, such as like integrated weight pouches or extra shoulder padding, then it's handy to know how to assemble a backplate and harness from scratch. Now, I'm gonna do a fairly basic Spartan type setup. If you have a harness with lots of extra fancy bits, it's gonna be much the same. Just be sure to either watch the entire video first and then of course start so that you know what to do in the middle. Um, or when you reach those points where, oh, he doesn't have this special such and such, um, just pause that point of the video so that you can add it, uh, add those parts before I move on to the next section. Um, there are only a couple of places where you can trip up because they're fairly simple and I'll try and highlight those as we go, but it's mainly down to having the webbing the wrong way up so it's kind of twisted. That's the only thing to really take care of. So first of all, let's see what you need if you need any specialist tools to get yourself started. quite rare that you need any actual tools to assemble or disassemble a webbing harness. You just need your good old phalanges. But if you do need to cut your webbing short, because they usually do give you a lot of webbing and you may need to just trim some off of the ends, then it's a good idea to have some cutting shears. I prefer shears just because it gives you better control compared to just a knife and a cigarette lighter or something to prevent the edge from fraying. If you've got one of those fancy like heat cutting knife things, great, use that. Um, most people don't have one of those, so cigarette lighter and um, yeah, just a melt those edges. Another useful thing but not essential can be a book screw or a good sized nut and bolt. Uh, something small enough to fit through these holes in the middle of your back plate but not so small that the entire thing goes all the way through. Uh, that'll make sense when I get to it. Um, a piece of chalk or some crayon can be useful as well to mark the webbing uh, just when you're adjusting it just makes your life a whole lot easier. As far as parts for the entire system, you're going to have your wing and your back plate, one of each, a, a section of two inch or 50 mil wide nylon webbing, four meters of it is usually plenty for all divers, a crotch strap. These are best bought pre-made. You can buy them pre-made in various thicknesses. So just measure the, uh, the slot at the bottom of your back plate just to make sure that it'll fit. There's a D-ring and a loop stitched in place in the front of the crotch strap. And I'm not that good with a sewing machine, so I just tend to buy them pre-made. It's just so much more economic and it looks better and it works better. But for hardware, the metal bits, a quick release buckle similar to the one on your weight belt buckle you need one of those uh, two pre-bent two inch d-rings and a pair of two inch straight d-rings as well again these come in a range of different styles you can get aluminium ones i think you can even get titanium ones as well um, but stainless steel two inch wide because it has to go on two inch webbing as well as at least six of these tri-gliders to hold those D-rings and a few other things in place. Uh, the extra two are for where your shoulder straps become your waistband. You need a couple at the back, again, unless you have some kind of fancy device down there that will replace them. Now, I prefer these straight tri-gliders like this one instead of the serrated ones. The serrated ones can be a bit too grippy and tough to relocate. They're great if you know exactly where you want it to go and it's never ever going to move. Um, but the, the straight ones, they're pretty tough as well, but the serrated ones, they're just a bit much for me. And some kits will come with some small sections of stretchy inner tubing. So these are to keep any excess strap just neat and tidy. And you want one or two 
underneath your shoulder D-rings as they can be useful to tuck things away so that they don't dangle off of the D-ring in the water. Um, but yeah, otherwise it's mainly for where the strap folds over and you don't want that flappy bit. So you just kind of tape it down almost. It all starts between your shoulder blades at the top of your back plate. And you'll notice one or two or sometimes three or more holes at the top of the back plate with horizontal and diagonal slits either side of it. If you bought a complete kit right in the middle of the long two inch webbing, you should find a hole and it's often with a grommet punched into it right in the middle of that webbing. So this hole in the webbing should line up with one of the holes on the back of the back plate. If you do have anything like a book screw handy, then I like to pop that in here to help keep the webbing in place whilst I'm just threading so that it doesn't like lengthen too much and pull through. It's not essential by all any means, but it might make your life just a little bit easier. Just do remember to remove it. Um, uh, you don't have to remove it, but just remember that it's there. Then you thread the webbing through that diagonal slot in the back plate and then back up through the horizontal slot so it looks a bit like this. This is the beginning of your shoulder straps. If you have any shoulder padding sections, this goes on at this point. If your set has any fan extra fancy bits that mine doesn't have, then do be sure not to miss those out as I go along. Then right at the top, a good like outstretched hand will get you the rough position of where your first shoulder D-ring should go. It's probably going to be a little bit high, so you're probably going to want an extra inch or so, but you're going to adjust this all a little bit later. For now, if you've got shoulder straps, they're usually sized up pretty well, so it gives you a good idea of where it's going to go. Otherwise, just yeah, a good like hands stretch. On some designs, you're going to have one of these bungee loops. This is a retainer for your corrugated inflator hose. So if you have an extra tri-glider, use that there, or some just double it up inside next to this D-ring, and it is just a place to store your corrugated hose. For this, you need one of those pre-bent D-rings and a tri-glider. The D-ring needs to be bent out away from the webbing. So I like to lay the whole um, strap as flat as possible so that I know which is the inside, which is the outside, and that the D-ring and everything is gonna be facing the right direction. The tri-glider goes on first like this. The glider is mostly on the underside of the webbing with the outermost parts of it on the front side of the webbing. It's trapping the D-ring underneath it. And then you slide that section of the glider to roughly where you want the D-ring to go. Thread the webbing through the D-ring until it meets the tri-glider and then double check it's the right way round or facing the right direction. And then thread the webbing back through the other slot in the tri-glider and then just pull it all tight. To move the D-ring, which we're gonna do a little bit later, just thread some of the webbing from one side and then just slide it to where you need it. But yeah, I'm gonna talk about fine tuning things in a little bit. Next comes a rubber ring underneath that D-ring. Divers use these to keep things like their dive torch, their backup torch close to their body, but still easy to get hold of. And it's just out of the way. So when you're horizontal in the water, they're not dangling down below you and just becoming flappy snag hazards. So once you've done that on both sides, once your entire shoulder assembly is complete, then it's gonna look a little something like this with two really long shoulder straps. And these now become your waist straps. The right one or your right hand side is the easy one. You thread it through one of these parallel slots around the hip zone of the back plate, thread a tri-glider in this spot, just helps to prevent the shoulder strap from just adjusting because without it, there is a little bit of movement and then you just thread it back through the outer slot. It's as simple as that. Now that is basically the right half of your waistband. 
You can slot a dive knife here. Some divers put a canister battery for either a canister torch or a heated undersuit or something. Um, extra quick release buckles. Sometimes divers will have two of those. Uh, one to actually release and the second one is more just to hold it in place. A hose retainer bar, just all sorts of things. But that's, that's your right side pretty much complete. Your left hand side starts much the same. You thread it through the back plate, making sure that it's twisted the correct way and that the tri-glider is in place to hold it there. But then we place one of the flat D-rings down what would be like the center line of your body. We're gonna adjust everything a bit later. I've mentioned that before. So don't worry about being too precise about exactly where it is uh, because if you need to adjust your shoulder st strap, then you're gonna to need to adjust that a little bit later. So don't worry about being too over precise at this point. Pop one of those rubber rings on here as well. Uh, we're gonna need that in a minute. And then finally, we get to our quick release buckle. Now, these all thread slightly differently, but you're aiming that the excess bit, the bit with the cut end, ends up on the inside instead of the outside just again so it doesn't get all flappy on the outside. This can be a little bit tricky uh, with some of the more stiff webbing, but don't be afraid to give it a good like stretch and a bend beforehand to make your life a little bit easier. Um, some actually have the design like stamped into it, which makes your life a little bit easier. Just follow that diagram. Otherwise, yeah, you sort of start from the outside, loop it around so that the, the, the cut end ends up on the inside. Now you have the crutch strap, which is usually made from a much softer nylon webbing because of where it's going. One end will have a sewn loop with a D-ring attached nearby. This is the front that goes right in front, kind of in your tummy, and will loop over your waistband. The other end threads through the horizontal slot at the bottom of your back plate, but not before you thread the final straight D-ring and the tri-glider that kind of sits just above your butt. Thread the strap through the outside of the back plate and then the excess threads through that tri-glider. And before you go cutting anything off, try it on wearing your thickest wetsuit or dry suit, whatever you're gonna be diving with, to make sure that you have the right size. Don't just put it on over a t-shirt unless you're only diving in a rash vest. Um, you, you really want to try it on a few times. Measure twice, cut once is the ethic that we're looking for here. Pop it on see how it feels, make sure it moves with you, and you should be able to get a good like fist underneath each shoulder strap. If you have adjustable straps, then you're laughing at this point because you've got quick adjustment, but in a more DIR style setup, get a good fist underneath there, that's a good starting point. You need enough spare room to wiggle into it, so that you can physically get into it, but not so much that the whole thing just moves around on your back. If it needs adjusting, this is where the chalk or the crayon can be quite useful because by the time that you notice, oh, I need to move such and such, you take it off, you're going to forget where to adjust it to. So try and mark the location with the chalk whilst it's actually on you because you've got a better view at that point or try and get a buddy to help you out at this point so that you know where to adjust and how much to adjust. Once the shoulder straps are the correct length, D-ring placement. So shoulder D-rings, you're going to need to trust me a little bit and shut your eyes, uh, but not right now so you can see me demonstrate. But basically make a, uh, a thumbs up and then touch your shoulder. That's kind of where you'll instinctively find your D-ring. You can do it on both sides, obviously. If the D-ring isn't there to grab hold of, then just mark that location and then shift the shoulder D-rings wherever they are until you can just find them on first try with your eyes closed. Just make clipping D-rings off much more natural without having to kind of find them, especially with a gloved hand. Left hip D-ring, similar thing. It should be right there on your hip to clip your gauges on. If it's too far forwards or too far back, then just mark where it should be. 
take it off and then you can move it around. You can get sliding D-rings like these ones and there are other designs out there obviously that, that do hold in place when there's something actually pulling on it but then if you kind of tilt it and move it flat, they'll move along the webbing, usually in both directions. These do make your life easier, and for some divers with like side-mounted cylinders that change buoyancy during the dive, it does make their lives a lot easier to be able to move that D-ring during the dive to stop it from floating away. But one thing to remember is that for this design in particular, the inner section is against your body. So if you're only wearing a thin rash vest, they can dig into your soft, delicate skin a little bit. It's not the end of the world, just something to be aware of if you dive somewhere only in nice waters without just padded wetsuits and things to protect you. The waist buckle placement is really up to you. Some divers like it dead center in the middle, whereas others prefer it off to one side to avoid mixing it up with their weight belt. And the buckle itself can help to hold your dive knife or battery or whatever it is on the right hand side in place. Just be sure that it works for you before you cut anything. Now you can adjust that crotch strap as well because the shoulders and the waistband are the correct length and crotch strap needs to be fairly snug but not so tight that it's gonna rub and it may even pull your back plate downwards because you're trying to hoik it and move around. So a comfortable amount of space that allows everything to sit where it needs to without being pulled up or down and check that you can reach that butt D-ring as well and it doesn't need moving up or down. Once you've tried it on five or six times because it's best to just practice and make sure that you're happy with everything, mark where you're going to cut those straps, take it off. The one on the buckle side can just be a flat square line cut. It doesn't have to be anything overly fancy. Try and cut it as cleanly as you can. And it's good if you also have a flat hard surface and maybe something like a metal ruler ready before you melt the edge. If you just melt the edge with a cigarette lighter, then the edge gets quite bulbous and round and you're gonna to struggle to thread it through or thread things over it. So it's better if that edge is nice and flat and squared as possible. So melt it. Give it a good squeeze so that you get a nice edge, a bit like this if you can. For the right hand side, you can get quite fancy with it. Some divers manage a round edge, which takes a fair amount of time to make sure you're cutting and melting it nice and neatly. Some prefer just a standard triangle cut. Personally, I prefer a bit more of a wedge so that you have something a bit more square and substantial to thread through and then you can grab it on the other side of the quick release. Whatever shape you choose, just melt all of the frayed edge and try to melt it as flat and neatly as possible to make your life easier because you're going to be threading that through that quick release. And if it's a pain on the first try, it's only going to get worse the longer you get with it. Scuba.com is your one-stop shop to find all of the top scuba diving brands from the classic big name brands like Aqualung, Atomic, Cressy, Maris, Scuba Pro, as well as some of the new and exciting brands bringing out their clever new gizmos, as well as having their online dive store that offers free shipping and a pressure-free fit guarantee where if your suit or your fins doesn't fit quite right, then scuba.com will send you out the next size and collect the wrong one free of charge. But yes, scuba.com is far more than just a website full of shiny new diving equipment. They also have two dive shops, one near Newport Beach in California and the other on West 17th Street in Manhattan. Here you can try on and buy diving equipment and scuba.com also teaches scuba classes as well. They run guided tours, services, dive equipment, and they also have the Pacific Coast Dive Club if you want to become a member. So if you're on the market for some new scuba diving equipment, head over to scuba.com. It's really easy to remember. It's literally scuba.com. Uh, or of course, you can click on this link up here or down in the description underneath this video.
If you are diving a single wing for single cylinders, then chances are that it has these vertical slots down the spine. These are for your cam bands to wrap around your cylinder and basically hold the wing onto the back plate. And they should ideally line up with the vertical slots on your back plate. There's no fully agreed upon standards when it comes to exact placement of these, so do be careful if you're mixing and matching brands, and some wings won't actually have these vertical slots at all. Uh, that just means that you're supposed to use them with a single tank adapter or an STA. In that case, it's best to stick to the same brands just to be sure that all of the holes are going to line up properly. Single tank adapters, they do make single cylinder diving a bit more rigid because the cylinder is just sits in a cradle, but many single wing designs nowadays actually have makeshift cradles built into them, so you don't actually need a single tank adapter in a lot of cases. If you do have these vertical slots, then pop the wing on the back plate and make sure that the hose roots over your left hand shoulder. The section that goes against the back plate is usually flat compared to the outer side, but the position of the inflator elbow is usually the best way to know where it is. Make sure you have it the right way up and that it's in the correct position. Then you need to thread your cam band from the back through the wing, then through the back plate, back through the back plate on itself, and then through the wing again. You re-thread the cam band and you're pretty much ready to go diving. Once you've done one, it's pretty easy to do another one. Um, we're rarely dealing with any complicated fastenings with back plates and wings, they're pretty simple. If you ever want to add an extra something to your harness, then yeah, you do have to unthread as much as you need to and then add that thing. If you need to swap the wing for a different size, unthread those cam bands and then pop the new wing in place. The hardest thing to change is usually the back plate itself because everything attaches onto that back plate. If you want to swap a steel back plate out for a lighter aluminium one, then yeah, you have to unthread everything and then put it all back together again. But you can get that done fairly quickly. Just make sure you're keeping organized and you do it all in the right order because it's very easy to get ahead of yourself and then at the end, yeah, you find that extra D-ring or like rubber thing that you need to, oh, I'm straight now I have to undo most of the left-hand side just to get that rubber ring back in position. Places where you might get caught out are usually where the shoulder strap meets the waistband because there are a few ways that you can twist that webbing, but only one is going to sit nicely around your body and not twist or dig in. Pre-bent D-rings and the tri-gliders as well. Remember that D-rings are going to be pointing downwards and then the pre-bent ones are pointing away from your webbing to make it easy to clip onto it. That and those quick release buckles. Uh, some have three slots, some only have two. They'll have like thin and thicker slots for either a single piece or two pieces. So you thread it through once and then back on itself of webbing to thread through. Uh, some designs, as I said, they're nice and they actually have a diagram of how to thread it, like either stamped into it or printed somewhere. So just take your time, make sure everything's nice and comfortable, everything is in the right place where you want it. And if you're on a dive and you actually think, oh, you know what, now that I'm in the water, gosh, I wish that that D-ring was just like up here or there was something on my waist, then put it there it's your bcd if you want more padding on your back or your shoulders or a pocket or whatever build the bcd for you for those kinds of parts remember to check out scuba.com to see how you can upgrade your bcd as well as plenty of other scuba diving equipment on their huge website or if you're nearby you can of course pop in have a chat with one of their knowledgeable staff members and they can help point you in the right direction for more videos like this, as well as the latest news about the scuba diving industry, head over to our website, scubadivermag.com. Check out our magazine as well, where we run all sorts of equipment reviews, advice articles, and of course, subscribe here to the Scuba Diver Magazine channel if you haven't already. Uh, if you do have any questions about backplates or anything, pop them down in the comment section below. If you want it featured in up and coming Ask Mark, then use that hashtag in your comments and that will get yourself in your question featured. Thank you for watching everybody and of course, safe diving.